Texas Governor Greg Abbott says the state will keep adding razor wire along the Rio Grande, despite the Supreme Court allowing the Biden administration to cut and remove it. Texas argues the wire acts as a deterrent for migrants coming to the southern border. White House officials have called it inhumane. As this plays out, negotiations in Washington on a border policy and foreign aid package could be in jeopardy. CBS News has learned Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell acknowledged Wednesday the politics around the border have changed because Donald Trump wants to use the issue to attack President Biden. Legislation signed by Biden would undermine those attacks. Here's how Senator Mitt Romney reacted to that Thursday. The idea that, that someone running for president would say, please hurt the country so I can blame my opponent and help my politics is a, uh, uh, a shocking uh, uh, development. Republican senators later said McConnell clarified his support for both the border talks and aid for Ukraine, which is a part of those negotiations. Let's bring in CBS News immigration reporter Camilo Montoya Galvez at the border in Eagle Pass, Texas. Camilo, does placing more razor wire put Texas in a legally gray area or uh, is the state, does it have a leg to stand on in this tussle with the federal government? Good evening, John. The state of Texas is certainly not backing down in this legal showdown with the federal government, with the Biden administration. In fact, I have seen Texas National Guard soldiers in this public park behind me set up more miles of fencing and razor wire to repel migrants from crossing into the country illegally. And that is because the state, John, is not legally required to remove it. The Supreme Court allowed the Biden administration to remove or cut the razor wire by suspending a lower court order that had blocked Border Patrol from doing that, but it has not required mm. Texas, John, to remove the razor wire affirmatively. So Texas is continuing to add more barriers to impede the passage of migrants into the U.S. in the stretch of the U.S.-Mexico border. Right now, Border Patrol cannot access this park behind me because the Texas National Guard is blocking them from entering this city-owned property, and so they cannot cut the wire here. But that could change in the coming days. The Department of Homeland Security, John, has given Texas until tomorrow to say that it will abandon this park and allow Border Patrol agents to patrol the riverbanks of the Rio Grande and to process migrants here. Otherwise, the Justice Department could very well sue. Thank you. That was very helpful. Okay, so now December was a record month for migrant arrivals. Um, what does the pace look like now? That's right. Well, John, back in December, more than 300,000 migrants were processed at and in between ports of entry here along the U.S.-Mexico border. That is an on-time monthly high that broke every other record in U.S. history. But since then, the number of migrants crossing the U.S.-Mexico border illegally has plummeted. Officials have attributed that to increased Mexican enforcement. The Mexican government, following a meeting in Mexico City with the Biden administration, has increased deportations of migrants, including to Venezuela, and has stopped buses and trains that are carrying migrants. Officials are also attributing this drop in illegal crossings to a, histor a historical, rather, a seasonal trend, John, where migrant apprehensions drop after the holidays. So this obviously is the status quo, but it could very well change as the temperatures uh, get warmer, John, and Mexican enforcement perhaps decreases. Camilo Montoya Galvez, thank you so much, Camilo. For more, let's bring in CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane on Capitol Hill. Scott, let's talk about former President Trump. How Exactly how is he affecting these negotiations uh, and, and, and who's listening to him? These negotiations are already wobbly to be charitable about it, John. And Donald Trump is poised and positioned, if not ready, to just chop the legs out from beneath them because he can impose his preferences, if not his will, on the dozens and dozens of congressional Republicans who've endorsed him and view him as the leader of the party as 2024 moves through. And I think ultimately, if Donald Trump wants a border deal spiked, it's hard to envision how a Republican coalition comes together in the U.S. House, potentially the necessary votes in the U.S. Senate. He has that capability. But Lindsey Graham, the Trump ally from South Carolina, says he is pressing Trump that this won't impact the 2024 election and better positions a future President Trump to deal with border issues if he's empowered the way Congress is trying to through these negotiations. Let's see how far that argument gets with Donald Trump from Lindsey Graham. 
The way it was originally designed, legislators were offended when presidents tried to tell them what to do. Now, presidential candidates are telling them what to do. But let's move on. Scott, border policy was meant to be a part of this tied to the money for Ukraine, Israel. If there's no consensus on the border, what happens to Ukraine aid? A lot of the skeptics say this is a fanciful notion, trying to put two very difficult things together into the same package and assuming it makes things easier to pass. Ukraine aid, if separated, if separated from border negotiations, could fare better, according to Virginia Senator Tim Kaine, who says the votes are there. If it gets to the floor, the votes are there for Ukraine aid to pass, even though it's far from unanimous and even though it might be leaking support among House and Senate Republicans. But how do you get it there? We still have a divided Congress with conflicting interests, conflicting campaign motivations, and just flat out conflict right now. <laughs> and the timetable's everything, isn't it, John? I mean, this is money the White House said it needed at the end of December. We are reaching the end of January, and nobody has hold, held up that alternative plan. And uh, desperately, the clock is ticking for the Ukrainians. Scott McFarlane on Capitol Hill. Thanks, as always, Scott. Thank you.